E. Vaughn here. See how clear the camera look now? We upgrading, we upgrading. I just finally figured out how to put my fucking IRL camera I use to record my vlogs and pranks and whatnot on here, on Streamlabs, so. It is kind of in my face, this is weird. As I'm looking at it, it's like really close up. We, I ain't, we don't, we don't reposition it later. It's gonna be a little amateur looking, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it look cool, I don't know. But regardless, it's not what we're here. We're here for casual. He has dropped the video. The most generational crash outs in the animal kingdom. I'm trying to think what animal that comes to mind when I think crash out. I, I immediately thought gorilla, probably some type of big cat, maybe. Maybe some type of bird, I don't know. Uh, it's probably a whole bunch of things, but that being said, if you do, like, comment, subscribe. If you're not new, just keep on coming back. Subscribe, but what are you doing? Now let's get into it. Oh, what the bro? That clip is. I knew it. He was gonna. What the f? They gonna add it. Look, he on damn. Bro, say, hey, what up? Damn. He said, hey, that's how I am when I was getting like school fights. I remember it was a school fight with like two girls. Side note, side story. It was like sixth grade. These two girls just started fighting right next to my locker. They right here. I'm like this. I was scared. Because I would have had the German suplex they had if they would have hit me. Now I'm just I'm trying. Hey. Crash out. Here's the definition, and here's the definition. Brawl. Crash out. All right, we're about to get the definition. Some people just say crash out, just say here's crash out. Someone who consistently on the verge of losing their shit and is ready to throw everything away at a moment's notice. That is the true definition of a crash out. All right, that just be throwing over. You just be. I see somebody getting mad. He a crash out. No, he's not. If you see somebody get mad at like the smallest thing and want to take their own life, and you with them, they are a crash out. That is crazy. Definition, and here's the definition, but in picture. And if it's not clear now, it will be by the end of this video. Crash outs exist in all walks of life. This is a crash out. That, that, is a, that is a true crash out right there. Clear now, it will be by the end of this video. Crash outs exist in all walks of life. You know what they say. Where there's a will, there's a way. For a Chris to get rocked by a fresh prince flick of the wrist. But today, we're going to talk about the biggest crash outs in nature. And there's a lot to choose from, so some had to get left off. I won't be talking about hippos, honey badgers, or Cape buffalo. I've said my piece on this roid raging homicide hydro horse on steroids. We already know Africa's black death is a hunter's nightmare for humans and lions alike. And I have an entire video on this biracial black air force hate mongering Hufflepuff. But what I will talk about are rhinos. Cause I've said that rhinos are legally blind, terminally yeah. traumatized anxiety tanks that'll buck up to anything from a butterfly to a buffalo. Except I was wrong. Recent studies show that the eyesight of rhinos might not even be that bad. It's just their attitude. Which means that rhino fully punted a warthog purposely and unprovoked, while this one perceived an assault on eight wheels and still went for a literal headshot. There's a reason why a group of rhinos is an honest to god crash, but they're not even the biggest crash outs in Africa. That would be elephants. Like, literally, they're the biggest. Whoever made this up actively helped escort people off the census. Which they don't need help doing since elephants flatlined over 600 people last year. But it isn't until oh, elephants hit must that they're doing since elephants flatlined over 600 people last year. But it isn't until elephants hit must that they really become crash out kings. Must is when a sudden burst of hormones turns elephants into 12,000 pound drunk lusting frat boys. The word must even comes from the word intoxicated and a down bad bull's testosterone levels can spike 60 times higher than normal. And that's where the crash out comes in. No animal is safe from an entitled elephant that can't handle rejection. Not even baby elephants. Eating a toddler because his mom won't relieve you? Crash out. But the real degeneracy didn't show itself until humans got involved. Yeah, it's, it's that kind of story. Poaching is evil, we all know it, and it's often the older, more mature bulls that get hit the hardest, for obvious reasons. What wasn't expected was removing elephant OGs from the population meant that the younger, immature teenage bulls in must got even more out of pocket. And what do you get when you have unruly six-ton six pests with no father figure to keep them in line? Eh, hell if I know. 
There was a period in the 90s where three young bulls that got rejected by their own kind, resorting to violating and killing not one, not two, not ten, but 63 rhinos. Fatherless behavior for an elephant apparently means turning a rhino from a tight end to a whiteout, and it wasn't until the season more mature bulls were brought back in that the rhino ravaging eventually stopped. And it's not just males that can choose violence. Brought back in, turning a rhino from a tight end to a white. I don't know why it took me a while to process this, but this is sexual assault. That rhino didn't agree to this. I don't even know if that rhino's a female. I'm gonna be honest. They, 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 I, this is not this. this, this it wasn't this until the season more mature bulls were brought back in that the rhino ravaging eventually stopped. And it's not just males that can choose violence. We can't forget that time an elephant traveled across India just to life deprive a 70 year old senior citizen while she was getting water. For context, that elephant escaped from the Dalma Wildlife Sanctuary and traveled over 100 miles to the Rapai village in Odisha. Being homicidal for over 100 miles straight is already menaced behavior. What solidified it was that same herd pulling up to that woman's funeral later that day and paying everything but respects. And that same elephant grabbed her soul evacuated 0 HP body and proceeded to put her in the negatives. Basically, she got put on a shirt except the shirt was reversible. And after death desecrating her corpse, dessert was destroying the woman's house along with several others. Now many have said the woman Maya Murmu had it coming and was involved in poaching and this was a case of an elephant not forgetting or forgiving. It also could have been someone's grandmother getting murked twice and memed on Twitter all because of RNG. We'll never know the why but what we do know is my favorite animal is capable of crash outs of catastrophic proportions. And now we got the smallest crash out in the world. When a colony of Kalabops' Saunder Sea Ants gets attacked, some of the soldiers will rupture two huge poison filled glands and literally blow themselves up. They don't just seppuku themselves, they also rain a toxic corrosive glue that either traps the op ants in place or just burns them alive. It's self-sacrificing all the versus to defend the colony, but that is one hell of an escalation. One species of termite also has a concept of kamikaze themselves, and they have toxic glands that actually grow as they get older. That means the same old worker termites with dull mandibles that can't fight or forge as well as their juniors also carry the most potent explosive backpacks in the colony. So their last act of service involves eviscerating themselves in a Rain of internal organs, intestines, and toxins, which proves that the most dangerous crash out is the one with nothing left to lose. For reference, that's like breaking into a house and the last thing you see is a senile 90 year old rushing you with a bomb strap to their chest. But the wildest crash out might be what P aphids do once a predator breaks into their home. Because not only will soldiers come together and turn themselves into fleshy fireworks, they'll use their own bodily fluids to plug up the opening. Even if it means they get left outside in past tense, even if it means they suffocate on their own insides, and even if the process senses it kind of them instantly. It's one thing that. to self destruct the backpedal of predator or even after already being eaten, which aphids actually do. Using flex seal made out of your own guts for home repair is exactly the type of behavior this video is about. But if elephants violating the natural order didn't already tell you, the worst crash outs are the ones humans created. And this black air force bee is the result of one of the biggest oopsies in human history. Back in the 50s, African bees were brought to Brazil and crossbred with their more domesticated European cousins. The idea was, if they could combine the two, they could create a bee that was more efficient than the Europeans in tropical climates while also being less defensive than the African counterparts. But in one of the most consequential f**k-ups possible, a local beekeeper accidentally released 26 swarms of Africanized bees, including queens. But experts said not to worry, that the bees would either die out in the foreign climate or get bred out of existence by the already present European bees. Yes, but actually no. By the 60s, they made it across the country. By the 80s, they hit Mexico. By the 90s, they were popping up in the US. And today, the Africanized assault has spread throughout America like a rageaholic rash. And here's the thing with playing God with bees. You better be prepared for hell. These Africanized bees were way meaner than anything this side of the Atlantic had ever seen. They were way more aggressive, much less forgiving, and the same honey merchants that were enough to legitimately punk elephants, that's not a joke by the way, were doing numbers on unsuspecting people. You see, where European bees might send 10 to 20 guard bees after you, the Africanized flying mob will pull up in the hundreds. And where European bees might chase you for uh, a couple feet, the African variety will chase trespassers for a quarter of a mile, assuming you even get that far. The irony <laughs> is, African bees have smaller hives, that means these gang flies weaponize a higher percentage of their hive just to go after you. Add the fact that the very smell of bee venom is like a Batman signal to the rest of the hive, and you realize just how badly that one beekeeper screwed us over. Speaking of venom, you probably know that honeybees die after stinging since the stingers are barbed and attached to their abdomen, causing attacking bees to literally disembowel themselves. What you might not know is that stinger will continue pumping venom into you long after the bee has become a was. Now that's just doing the most. That's how you get stories of people being chased by vindictive swarms. Oh and by the way, it's proven if you try to duck the fade by jumping in the water, they will 
wait, sometimes with fatal consequences. In 2013, a Texas man died after being stung over 1,000 times, and the beast still had enough malice left over to leave his wife and daughter with 100 apiece. It says a lot that the dietary habits of the Crash Out mascot might have helped create one of the most infamous crash crowds in the air. But not all crash outs are fueled by hate, some are powered by love. Courting bald eagles will interlock talons and plummet down towards the earth, only to separate at the last possible second. Because apparently, what? feathery foreplay yeah, is kind of tough in a questionable game of chicken. Apparently, it's to test each other's fitness as a possible partner, you know, separate the strong from the strongest. Except it does the opposite when the entangled avians crash land into trees, water, or sometimes straight pavement and take each other out the dating pool. And bald eagles mate for life, so where do you even go after your vow renewal turns into a wake that only one of you is conscious for? A study showed that eagles will also death spiral with rivals, so it's really a case of either f me or fight me or just don't waste my time. <laughs> but that makes even less sense, because at least with a mate, the logic is you're trying to find the strongest, most eligible single to spend the rest of your life with. Handing death a two for one BOGO deal because you had beef and literally couldn't let it go is the definition of crashing out. At least when it happens with deer like moose, you know it's really bad luck. But voluntarily interlocking toes just to die with someone you claim to hate, like what's really going on here? But that relationship's nowhere near as toxic as the house sparrows. It's like Tweety listen to NBA Youngboy. It's a honey badger with wings and an op to every other bird, but especially their own kind. Okay, so the crashing out is caused by the fact that house sparrows are monogamous and mate for life. They're also serial cheating air strumpets, and 15% of sparrow children born aren't even related to the male raising them. Cheating isn't a foreign concept to birds. Thoughts and prayers out to the penguin that got dogged out, got his cloaca kicked by I his wife's boyfriend, begged for her back, got beat again, only to get rejected and bust his ass a third time. Yeah, no way he goes out that sad. Male sparrows that suspect their partner of cheating get their revenge by purposely feeding their children less, bordering on starvation. The thing is, he has no way of knowing which chick's actually his. He only goes by how much time the mother spends away from the nest. Basically, imagine your dad stars you within an inch of your life, all because your mom spent the wait. equivalent of 10. Hold on, wait, gotta go check him out. Chicken, you know. Got my chicken. No, I ain't gonna eat. I, I know some people hate when like, a YouTuber eat in the middle of a video or something, which is crazy to me, but I'm gonna wait till that cool down anyway. 10 extra minutes at the grocery store. But female sparrows ain't sweet either. The difference is she cheats with better genetic quality or you could say high value males, while the male cheats to spread his seed as far as physically possible. Yes, Except that the female catches on to the cheat and she responds by slaughtering his entire family, children and all. And it's scientifically proven that butchering the baby offers more advantage to the offending female. It's just pure love of the game. Cheating's never right, but when your get back gets children buried, you have lost the plot. Especially since the females most likely to commit baby cancellation are second wives. As in, they got with a cheater, got with him due to cheating, only to wipe out the entire first family. Also, I just thought about it. She also has no way of knowing which chicks are his. That means she really just life retires any baby sparrow she comes across. Yeah, that's a crash out of the highest order. And right up there with them, has to be this frog. It's a culinary crash dummy off the fact that the Argentine horned frog would rather choke to death trying to swallow something physically bigger than they are than just give it up. Scientists have found expired <laughs> frogs with their stomachs torn open out of pure stubbornness. It's a gluttonous breathing pot of greed card come to life. Not only that, they're terrible swimmers, embarrassingly bad jumpers, and yo, they don't even rib it. <laughs> they don't even rib it. Yeah, this thing would freak me the fuck out. I don't know, a frog. bro. Frogs freak me the, the fuck gut. out. They can even develop amphibian corneal lipidosis, where they hold on to so much fat they literally accumulate fat deposits on their eyes that blind them. To be fair, it's usually from overfeeding in captivity, but my brother in Christ, even Nakado Avocado put the fork down at some point. Especially since frogs can't vomit, the best this kitchen crash out can do is fully eject their stomachs. But luckily, they're not a threat to you. Next is a crash out that the majority of the He's American trying to put it back to side step like, on a basis. Which is funny, because the Canada goose nearly got put in an eternal milk carton due to overhunting and habitat loss. Imagine. In fact, we fully thought they were- huh, like, imagine you can like, up your stomach. Out of stock in the 50s until a small flock was found in Rochester, Minnesota. And with the help of the Migratory Bird Treaty Act in the Hold US on. and the Migratory Birds Convention Act in Canada, along with conservation efforts, the Canada goose was able to make a comeback. And humanity and geese lived happily ever. Absolutely not. Yet a cobra chicken came back with a vengeance. I called the sparrow an airborne honey badger. Nah, nah, nah. 
It's this barcode of assault with wings. Easily the most undeserved arrogance I've ever seen on an animal. And that's really what it is. This damn Velociraptor has some wildly irrational confidence. They're like Family Guy. They nearly got canceled, came back, and by God do they not miss a chance to punish us for it. Even Sully's heroic landing in the Hudson wouldn't have even been needed if a goose didn't try to run a fade with a plane. Just proof that you can get a lot of mileage at a false, unearned valor. Cause it's a bluff. Geese nest on the ground, so they only really can respond to a threat to minor safety by implementing the honey badger method. By raising hell until you meet someone that takes you there. Add the fact that they've managed to lose their fear of humans and you have a honk happy threat to national security. I've even read reports of them apparently luring chasing dogs into deep water just to attack and harass them until they eventually drown in exhaustion. To be fair, you could just... lease your dog? Oh, also, goose tongue. But yeah, that attitude's a bluff, and they read body language, so act like you've been around a goose before and you'll probably be fine. So why are geese so mean? Eh, they'd probably be dead if they weren't. But at least they're not capable of really damaging anything but your pride. Complete opposite of chimpanzees. <laughs> he probably coming. the top three crash out in nature. They remind me of those damn really things in regular shows. can set this chainsaw with thumbs off. Change your hairstyle for the first time in 10 years? Yeah, you just lost your face privileges. Push one of your troop mates a little too far? Call it Kaizen the way you about to get Jujutsu jump. Do a f***ing barrel roll? Absolutely not. Not in these parts. <laughs> Chimps and really primates in general have a sense of fairness. Do something they view as unfair? Oh, buddy. You finna find out why they're the prime ministers of unproportional reactions. This man decided to surprise his former pet chimp with a chocolate cake for his birthday. The real surprise was two male chimps getting out and mutilating the man for not serving them a slice first. I'm not gonna list the full extent of his injuries, I have a full video doing that. Just know, the first two hospitals denied him entry because they literally thought he was a lost cause. Monkeys in captivity have also been known to mob a member of their own for receiving more food than the others. And when I was eight, a chimp temper tantrum nearly had me halfway to Helen Keller. Almost had me walking in Nick Fury fit. And we cannot forget that time monkeys in India went on a campaign of dropping dogs from roofs after one allegedly attacked a baby of their own. Yeah, primates are some Hall of Fame crash outs. Question is, what could possibly be more destructive? Well... Oh, tigers. tigers are easily one of the most vengeful creatures alive, and the moment this striped population control wants you dead, you might as well lease a casket. There's oh, plenty yeah. of stories of tigers going from zero to a thousand. In 2007, three teenagers that may or may not have been under the influence taunted 243-pound Tatiana the tiger, reportedly even pelting her with pine cones from a slingshot. Tati oh, killed a 12-foot mo, severely mauled two of the teens, and killed the third. In 2016, a tiger ripped apart an infamous poacher named Baby only four days after his group reportedly shot his mate. In 97, a hunter named Vladimir Markov not only shot a tiger, but had the audacity to steal his kill. As a result, the whisker John Wick stalked his cat tiger, but had the audacity to steal What's wrong with his left, bro? Did he go blind? Did he go blind? Damn. Steal his kill. As a result, the whisker John Wick stalked his cabin, tore anything that smelled like him to shreds, including his mattress and bedding, and apparently even demolished an outhouse Markov had used. As you can guess, the story ended around the same time Vladdy did, once the Siberian assassin was there to greet him at his house. And then there's this. The backstory is that a mother tiger and her cubs had ventured beyond the boundaries of a park and had injured cattle in the process, so rangers went out to capture and relocate the trio. They successfully tranked and removed the cubs, but the mother was nowhere to be found. That was until about right here. The enraged mother cleared a full-grown elephant and managed to mutilate the mahout riding it, taking several fingers with her and the fury on four legs was never seen again. But the most infamous big cat crash out came in the early 1900s, when a tiger dubbed the man-eater a Chumpawat killed 436 people, giving her the highest human body count of any single animal. And it was discovered that the cause was a cripplingly debilitating tooth injury that forced her to go after easier prey. And that's the thing I do want to mention. I know I had fun with the crash out concept, but really all the tiger was ever guilty of doing was what came naturally. And that really goes for every animal on this list. Tatiana wouldn't have had to die and take someone's son with her if they hadn't gone and tested her killer. Travis was an overweight, socially stunted, Xanax-consuming time bomb that some woman decided to keep inside as a pet. Even the whole Elephino mess started with poachers destroying and fragmenting their families and probably giving the pachyderms PTSD. Like, I'll joke around and stuff for comedic effect, but I'm not actually out here judging animals by human standards. Cause he said something real before he got Chris rocked and left with fresh prints. Talk about the tiger went crazy! That tiger ain't go crazy! That tiger went tiger! But yeah, that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure you drink water, hug your mother. There's no church in the wild and no judge in the jungle, so don't expect animals to follow either. And I'ma see y'all in the next one. <laughs> Is he about to- oh.
Oh, he came to his defense. That's a W man. W man. Ah, that's, that is true, though. I don't know why we do that. Like, a gorilla will attack a zookeeper or a tiger will attack. Or, like, just an animal will be an animal. And we're like, oh, my God, they never did this before. So... He just went back to his nature one day. I don't know. He just, he just let you live. I don't, I don't. But uh, W video, I expected to see you know some 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 monkeys, birds. You know, surprised me on some of them. But hey, at the end of the day, now we know what the true definition of a crash out is. And uh, just hope you don't run into one one day. See you on the next. Peace.